Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to episode 5 of the Pre-Achievement series, this week focusing on the Reputation section. We'll run through all the Achievement Reputations and give a solid overview on how to best get exalted with them. I'll structure this episode by first running through the Classic Achievements, then the Burning Crusade, and lastly the General ones, as these are normally combinations of other Reputations that give a title as a reward. As well though, I will mention that we will not be covering reputations that aren't associated with one of these achievements, as this would make the video even longer than it already is. I'll also just note here that all of these achievements, unless specified otherwise, just require you to get exalted with the faction that I'm talking about. So, that not that I'm just repeating that for every single one that we go through. But, without further ado, as I said, let's begin in the old world. The first of the five reputation achievements in Classic is the Argent Dawn. These holy warriors are based out of Lightshope Chapel in the Eastern Plaguelands, but have agents throughout the world, although your port of call for their rep quests being in the Eastern Western Plaguelands. Now, if you want to be hyper-optimal about your grind with the Argent Dawn, you need to first get an Argent Dawn commission from one of their recruitment agents at either the Bulwark for the Horde or Chillwind Camp for the Alliance then head to Scholomance or Stratholm Undead and just start killing. Keep killing and saving up the Scourge Strones that they drop until you hit Otted. At this point, the normal mobs inside those dungeons stop giving a rep and only the bosses give 50 each. At Honored, you then start doing the quests, handing in your Scourge Stones and killing bosses in those two dungeons. Personally, I prefer Scholomance due to there being more bosses there for just not only the boss rep, but for each of those bosses then dropping a Corruptor's Scourge Stone for an additional 50 rep itself. Plus, there's the added bonus of the repeatable Healthy Dragon Scale quest that you get off some of the Plague Whelplings before you face Rattlegore. You can have multiple of these on you, and each one gives another 50 rep. So on average you'll get one to three of these per run as well, which helps push your rep along nicely. Then the last place to get rep is in Naxxaramas itself, where each boss gives 150 to 200 rep each, and select mobs throughout the raid also give 50 to everyone in the raid. So this is likely one of the factions that you would have gotten exalted with naturally by prog raiding in Classic WoW, as there's a, there's a lot of bosses in Nax. The next three are way less complicated than that, reasonably simplified guide as can all be concluded with kill all the bad men in the raids. The Hydraction Waterlords are basically just about killing stuff in Molten Core, with Revered to Exalted being just bosses so it's dramatically slower, but there are also some quests for them, especially around getting your rune extinguishing juice, but in terms of overall rep it's pretty negligible. The Zandalar tribe are pretty similar to killing stuff to ZG, except it's a lot easier with the BOE coins and bijous that are droppable throughout Zulgarub and can be turned into tons of rep. So if you haven't got this one already, you can just kind of buy it. And I'll share a macro later in the episode which makes handing in tons of stuff at the same time way easier. As there are tons of reps which you just have to hand in tons and tons and tons of stuff with. Then the last of the third is the Brood of Nors Dormu, which is all about killing stuff in AQ40. You start it hated, and it's very rapid rep growth from there, such that it'll only take you about a month of full AQ40 runs to get up to Exalted, especially with the Karaji Lord insignias from each of the bosses, and the ancient Karaji artifacts that drop throughout the raid from Trash. I'll also note that you needed to go from hated to neutral with the Brood if you were doing the Scarab Lord quest, but that's a whole conversation in on itself, but you know, trivia. The last classic rep to cover is the only one without a dungeon or raid associated with them, the Timbermore tribe. And this is by far the biggest pain in the ass to do of all of the rep achievements, even into the Burning Crusade. There are some starter quests coming from Grazel in the southwest of the Emerald Sanctuary in Felwood, and a relatively short chain from him that starts to take you from unfriendly up to about friendly if you follow it all the way through into winter spring as well but once that's done the grind really begins and you need to kill kill a lot of the bad fur bogs you have two good options for doing this first is at Felpore village in the northernmost part of Felwood or Winterfall village which is just east of the everlook in winter spring you keep killing and getting 5 rep from a normal guy and either 15 or 25 for a named mob whilst collecting tons of deadwood headdress feathers from the Felwood side or Winterfall spirit beads from the Winterspring side. You never hand these in until you kill your way up to Revered. Avoid the temptation as the only, and I repeat, 
only way to get that final 21,000 rep is by handing in those. Every five of them gives you 50 rep. So you have to grind up 2,100 of these to get exalted, assuming you don't kill any of the named guys who do continue to give their 15 to 25 rep each kill, which does stack up after a while, but make sure you have a good stockpile of those hand-ins beforehand. So really, the guide here is just keep killing, looting, stockpiling, and you'll eventually get exalted with them. Once you do, I will also say that you get the special quest. That means you just go kill a demon in Winterfall Village for them, get a totem, take it back to your respective faction leader, and they announce to you the entire city that you've spent godless amounts of time getting exalted. But, you know, little bonuses out as of the achievement there for you at the end. And so, just to recap, at the end of the classic achievement section, the five you need to exalted are the Argent Dawn, Hydraxon Waterlords, Zandalar Tribe, Brood of Nozdormu, and the Timbermore Hold. Plenty of other reputations in classic that don't have an achievement to them, but we'll sort of touch on them later on. But along to the Burning Crusade, which comes with far more achievements than just the measly five that are in Classic, with a grand total of 14 amongst the 16 reputations. This is an interesting setup, so we'll start big with the achievement, the Burning Crusader, which requires you to get all five of the dungeon reputations to Exalted, that being Brawlmar or Honor Hold, Scenarian Expedition, Lower City, Keepers of Time, and the Shatar. Now then, I'll go in that order and give a brief overview of the best ways to get their rep up. So to start in roughly that order, the advice for both Thrallmar and Honor Hold are the same, with the early dungeons of Ramparts and Blood Furnace providing rep up to Honored while you're still in your low 60s, and then Shattered Halls from level 67 gives rep all the way up to 999 out of 1000 Exalted. Beyond this, there are a myriad of quests throughout the Hellfire Peninsula for extra rep, which can be acquired at any rep level. So if you want to go full mega meta, you would do the dungeon leveling up to Honored, do all the quests in Hellfire, and then finish up with the rest in the Shattered Halls. And now that Magtheridon is getting killed pretty frequently as well, you'll have a consistent stream of that zone-wide buff, giving an extra 10% rep for dungeon kills, which will make this grind that little bit easier. Then onto the Snarian Expedition, which is more or less the same than their Hellfire counterparts, with the Slave Pens and Underbog being your low-level dungeons up until Honored, and the Steam Vaults until Exalted, although the slight difference is that their questing rep is far more spread out than those of their Hellfire counterparts, with the connection quests at the Snarian Outpost in the Peninsula to their main hub in Zangamash, a quest chain throughout Terracar to figure out who set up the bomb, and further outposts in the middle of Blade's Edge. There are really just a lot of quest rep chances for these guys. I'll also pause and say that there is a separate achievement from the Burning Crusader, which is just get the Scenarian War Hippogriff for 1.6k at Exalted from the Scenarian Expedition. I'm sure you're starting to see a theme here, and it kind of continues with the Lower City, as these are dungeon reps, so the rep you gain are from dungeons. This time it's Arcanide Crypts and Sethic Halls till Honored, and the Shadow Labyrinth until Exalted. Interestingly, their Heroic Key also covers Mana Tombs, which gives Consortium Rep, not Lower City. Beyond this, there are many quest chains from all over the place throughout Terracar for extra rep, mainly starting from Shatrath City itself, or around the Refugee Caravan just north of Arkandun itself. So like the other two, Dungeon to Honored, Quest, and do the Big Boy Dungeon until Exalted. Next, the Keepers of Time are a lot more simple, as they is only one quest chain for them in the Caverns of Time, which takes you through their two dungeon options and gives tons of rep. You basically almost get to Revered by the end of it, and that's with only one run of Escape from Durnhold and the Black Morass. Both normal and heroic versions can give you rep into Exalted, so this is pretty simple. Do the quest chain, then chain the dungeons. And then the last dungeon rep to cover for this single achievement is the Shatar, the Naru faction of Shatrath City who cares about the Tempest Keep dungeons. Now, these guys don't really have many quests with a few associated with those dungeons and a few in line with the lower city quest chains around Arkandun, but what they do have is an overflow rep gain. What this is, is bonus rep, which is not explicitly stated when you get another rep with another faction. And in this case, it's with the Aldor or Scryers. 
getting rep with either of those factions through the repeatables or netherstorm slash shadow moon quests also provide reputation with the shatar until honored as well from there pick out those few quests and then grind out the botanica mechana or alcatraz on either mode up to exalted and all those reputations were again a single achievement worth 20 points not the normal 10 but i promise you at least the rest of the cbc section won't be that elaborate to get them so the natural place to continue are with the Shatari's best friends, the Aldo and Scryers. For this achievement, you only need one of them brought to Exalted, as I'm sure you've seen that if you get one rep up, the other goes down. Both have quest changes throughout the Netherstorm and Shadow Moon Valley, which give a solid amount of rep, but the main way you're going to get them to Exalted is through repeatable hand-ins. For the Aldor, you need 10 marks of Kill Jaden until Honored from lower level demons and their worshippers, 10 marks of Sargaris from higher level demonic men until Exalted, and the big important hand in are Fell Armaments from any level, which come with a complementary Holy Dust to be used buying the Shoulder Enchants. It's much the same for the Scryers with Firewing Signets, Sun Fury Signets, and then Arcane Tomes, which give Arcane Runes, which function basically the same thing, and these come off Blood Elf opponents throughout the Outland. This is one of those achievements that you can sort of de facto buy, but there are tons of good grinding spots, and this can also be a great gold maker too, once you hit Exalted, so I recommend looking up those specific guides for both of these on the best places to grind and get those tokens. And so to move on to a zone we haven't actually covered in any of the previous reputations, we head to Nagrand to get exalted with either the Magha for the Horde or the Kurinai for the Alliance. You started unfriendly with both of these factions and have to do a short introductory quest chain to show them that you're a cool dude to get to neutral and then get onto all of the quests in each hub. The Horde actually have two choices in this quest as you can go to hellfire and follow the assassin quest line from nazgrel in thrallmar and you can actually get to neutral before you head to nagrand and then do that same intro quest line for a ton of rep whereas the alliance only have the one option to get to the same place and nothing to really boost beyond that just completing all these quests in nagrand for them and from there you'll become a ogre killing game each ogre gives you 10 rep and for every 10 obsidian war beads you get an additional 500 these beads have a roughly 40 percent drop chance off every single ogre in the zone so hit early revered through the questing and then get on the killing bad wagon although i will tie this into another grind previously mentioned on the channel which is the dark talbux and hala which takes research tokens these ogres drop the dust required for them so getting your rep with the nagrand factions is a great way to kill two birds with one stone but what if you're a monster an efficient monster and you want to keep killing birds with that same stone well the next rep we'll look at is the consortium and before i get into the main bit of the guide they too have a repeatable 10 obsidian war beads which gives 250 rep with them for each hand in so by the time you get to both your chosen the grand faction and the consortium to exalted you should have the 35 research tokens required for your pvb talbuck although interestingly the consortium are the only non-dungeon faction with a dungeon for them as mentioned going into the mana tombs till honored on normal and then all the way to exalted on heroic is a good way to get rep with these guys beyond this there are quests one hub in the grand and then the other being throughout the Deatherstorm. Then lastly, you do get consortium rep for the dungeon dailies as well. The normal mode dungeon dailies also give something interesting with them, an Ethereum prison key. This nifty key is obtained by killing the naughty ethereals around Mana Forge Ultras and start dropping after you complete the quest, A Mission of Mercy. You can use these to open up a containment chamber in small prison camps around that very same Mana Forge to either get a prisoner of any of the Outland factions, which will give you 500 rep with that faction, or spawn some mob that you need to kill, who will then drop an ID card which you can hand in to Commander Amir, the same man you do the Mission of Mercy for, and these will give another 250 rep each and these are buyable and sellable so this is actually a decent gold grind as well but from intergalactic bandage men to newly evolved spore peoples with the next faction sporegar so this one is either very easy or a massive grind depending on if you decide to spend some cash either way you start with some quests in the southwestern section getting bog lord tendrils and mature spore sacks to help you move from unfriendly to neutral now from here you can either do a variety of quests for these guys like killing the black stalker and underbog a repeatable to kill naga at a nearby steam pump as well as hand in fertile spores but if you're not short on those gold stacks you can buy tons of glow caps for a repeatable quest which requires 
10 glow caps, which gives 250 rep each. Don't worry about overbuying this as well, as these are the currency for the Sporgar vendor. Now you can only do that glow cap until you're friendly with them. So from friendly to exalted, you'll need to either continue doing those same quests I mentioned earlier, or do another continuous hand in with the Sanguine Hibiscus. Only need five of these for the repeatable for another 250 rep per hand in. Both of these are pretty cheap, at least on my home server, so worth doing it now before Wrath just on price alone. But if you do want to just farm them naturally, the glow caps are from all around Zangamash, just on the ground, whilst the Hibiscus are throughout the Underbog instance. And so now to move on to two reputations which can't work on yet in Phase 1, but are in an interesting twist very interconnected, the Shatari Skyguard and Ogrelar. First with the Skyguard, you begin at neutral with them and follow a relatively quick quest line beginning from an NPC near the Flightmaster in Shatrath City. He will direct you to the Skyguard base in the northern part of Skettis in Terracar Forest. This will basically just unlock your dailies, which if you keep up with, you'll get exalted within about a month. And the second daily base for these guys is, as I alluded to, right next to the Ogrela camp. And some of the quests like Guardian of the Moment and Banish the Demons actually give rep for both of these factions. Ogrela as a faction are the most nice ogres to everyone we've met, and to have sort of transcended using Cadgar's favourite thing, the Pexus Crystals. But before you can be friendly to the friendly ogres, you have to start a quest chain from Grok in the Lower City, who's a big red ogre in Shatrath. This will take you through a relatively small quest line, although it requires a full group to do all of them, which will set you up with the Ogre La Neutral, so you can continue getting the rep once they are released. Similar to the Skyguard, they have fairly few actual quests, and dailies will be your main rep source with these guys. Also make note that Apexis Crystals are their main resource on how you buy from their vendor, so keep an eye out for nodes throughout the plateau in the Blades Edge Mountain. The last of the TBC reputations outside of the raids is the Netherwing, providing what is easily one of the coolest mounts even to this day. They are far more involved to get to Exalted, and will take about a month to do unless you get lucky finding Netherwing eggs, which are pick upable items from the ground or from Nether Spite in Karazhan for a repeatable rep quest. But at first, you start hated with them, and in a small quest line that you can actually complete now in Phase 1, you have to talk to Mordenai, who is a Blood Elf looking dude that wanders around the Netherwing fields just south of the Black Temple in Shadowmoon Valley. These nine quests, to which the last few require a group, will set you up to neutral, and then that's where the real fun begins. Once the Netherwing rep unlocks, you'll be able to talk to Mordenai once again to start the daily grind. But what makes this one a lot more interesting than the previous two reps we've talked about is that there's a theme, and that the dailies change at each rep level. As once you're on the shelf yourself, you're no longer whatever you are. You're a fellow climbing the Dragon Maw ranks. I don't want to spoil all the quests or the cool extra promotion between each rep tier and just the transition between each set of dailies. It's such a good grind and the mount at the end is super worth it. Although, speaking of the Netherwing, there is actually a special achievement in the rep section which doesn't involve getting to Exalted. Shocking, I know and that is to defeat Captain Sky Shatter in a Dragon Moor race. Slight spoilers, I suppose, for, but from Honored, there's a six-part quest to race other people, which you basically need epic flying for, which ends in the defeat of the Captain and getting the trinket Skybreaker Whip, which is another 10% mount speed trinket, which may well stack with the 10% mount riding crop for extra farming efficiency. And now, on to the raid reputations, which are another four achievements. The Violet Eye, the Ash Tongue Deathspawn, the Scale of the Sand, and lastly, the Shattered Sun Offensive. To start in that order is with the Violet Eye, who just kind of vibe outside of Karazhan, and that's exactly where you'll get more rep with them. Aside from a quest chain to get attuned to Karazhan itself, and the one to get the Nightbane summon, there isn't anything special to do with the rep these guys, and you can't really cheese it to get it super quick, so just sort of keep going in there every week and kicking ass. Onto the Death Swarm, the Broken Genai led by Karma, whose sole purpose is to retake the Holy City of Karabor, or as it's known now, the Black Temple, and you're going to help him week in and week out pretty much for those sweet, sweet war glaives. Thankfully, in that process, you'll get the rep as outside of the attunement quest chain, which ends in you needing to kill Illidan. 
there aren't actually any other places to get rep with them. More direct are the Scale of the Sands, who are the faction associated with the Battle of Mount Hygel, and similar to the Deathsworn, outside of the Attunement, you just have to go in there and kill dudes. And then the last of the raid reps, the Shattered Sun Offensive, are funnily enough, the only ones that you can actually get without ever setting foot in the raid as they have such a large amount of dailies throughout the Isle of Queldenas. And if they do it the same way that they did before, both the dailies in the Isle and the bosses in Sunwell will be sort of tiered and gated, so you can actually watch the island develop through the dailies that you do as a server. Sort of similar to the war effort, except there's not some huge material cost. So, this is just a keep going to the dailies, keep hitting up the Sunwell, it won't take you too long. I'll also note you can spend a thousand gold at Exalted as a bit of a donation to get the Of the Shattered Hand title, which is a pretty cool title. And so that's both Classic and TBC cleared with the only the general tab left. So only four more achievements left and they're all kind of just combinations of other reps. But this is where you get all of your titles once Wrath actually drops. First is to get all your five home factions to Exalted, and then you'll get the Ambassador title in Wrath for achieving this. There are tons of avenues to get this rep for all of these guys. Being an early completionist and zone hopper will let you do a ton of quests at the appropriate level, as well as when you transition into Outland, most quests without a specific rep already associated with them will give you rep with your entire faction. Then add in all the world events, normally being able to give you some rep here and there, and runecloth hand-ins if you're really struggling, you should be able to get this while going out and just playing the game. Next is the Timbermore, Sporgar, and the Maghar and Kurenai to Exalted from Unfriendly, which will get you the Diplomat title. Then getting Exalted with the Scenarian Circle, the classic guys, and the Scenarian Expedition, the Outland ones, will give you the Guardian of Scenarius title. And finally, We've all now reached it. The last achievement of the lot. Get exalted with one reputation. Just one. Nice and easy. But, haha, hold your horses. Wait up. Calm down. As there are more than just one. As this is a tiered achievement, which follows up at five, then another one for every five more after that. With both factions having access to 41 reputations in total. With 40 of them being shared, then the spare one being Tranquillin for the Horde, and winter spring trainers for the alliance so i'll be honest it'll be an absolute slog and a boring one at that to go through all the remaining reputations and telling you how to get to exalted with them especially when there are some seriously tedious ones like ravenhold shrendrala or dark moon fair with that anticlimactic ending i thank you for joining me through this far larger than normal video as mentioned next week i'll be wrapping up this series and touching on a few small world event achievements you can get but they will mostly be untrackable as of yet after that i've got some ideas for the channel which i'll let you know about when i've sort of fully fleshed them out for now thank you again for your time and please like and subscribe below have a great one all